record now. Good evening, punters, and welcome to another episode of The Tripod, where we break down every single NRL game every week from a betting perspective. This week, we will be going through round two of the NRL. Who knows how long we'll have the NRL with us, but we are glad to be able to bet on round two, and we do have some strong leans this week. Jacob, how are you doing? It's been a crazy week. Oh, these are crazy times, mate. I'm well. I hope you are too. Um, what we're not going to do is throw our two cents in on, you know, the whole coronavirus and the whole fiasco and how it how it's going to play in with the NRL and our opinions. Of course, we will relate to it because it's in the context of punting. We have empty stadiums this week. We've never had that before. Just the disruption to squads and their preparation. You be crazy to completely ignore it, but this is not the place. I mean, one small positive. I think we've got to remember footy is is an important thing among the far least important things in life. We've got to remember what really matters at times like this and look after yep. each other. Agreed. But yeah, a positive may be that the more people have more time to watch the TV screen. And that's why I sincerely hope there will be footy on this week because I do promise, as always, we've put in the hard yards to work our very best to find as many winners as we have. So we take what we do seriously. It might be an escape for some people listening to the pod and following the footy. We're still trying as hard as ever to pick winners for the boys. And you're right. The one shining light might be that a few more punters that are losing punters long term might just stumble upon the pod talking about some rugby league when there's little to no other sport on. Let us get the games kicked off. Let's start with Thursday night. And just before we do, one theme which which we want to just emphasize right from the start. Let's not overreact to round one. We all watched round one. We saw all the games. The trap that everyone falls into is thinking what they saw round one is what that team is this year. And some teams had a bit of bad luck. Some teams were in games that were closer than they looked. Some teams played a bloody tough opposition that made them look bad. We're going to obviously touch on all those aspects as we break down round two. Yes, you're 100% right. And what we do, we don't you know, just look solely at round one. We look at, obviously, last year and all sorts of stuff. So, like you said, very important not to overreact to round one. Let's start with Thursday night's game. We have the Canterbury Bulldogs hosting the North Queensland Cowboys. The Bulldogs are two and a half point underdogs. The total sitting at 37 and a half. Looks like the weather's going to be pretty much fine for this one. Um, I don't have a huge lean on this one. I did like the Cowboys. I think they started the week at about one and a half point favorites. At that line, I think I would have actually played the Cowboys. But now with the news, obviously, like you said, Jacob, with empty stadiums, the lines have adjusted to no home field advantage or little to no home field advantage. And, and that's what a, what I believe is the case here. I do think that the Cowboys are still the superior team. I know that they just got run over by the Bull, by the Broncos last week, but I won't take too much away from them because, look, I saw the Broncos play all of last year and I saw them play round one this year. I thought that that was one of the best games they've played in the last 12 months, to be fair. The forwards absolutely pummeled the Cowboys. I don't think that the Bulldogs forward pack is as strong to just demolish the Cowboys forward pack like this week. Um, The weather is fine. I think that slightly helps the Cowboys as well. Just a few more playmakers on that team than the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs generally like to grind out low-scoring games. So look at the two-and-a-half line. I lean cows, but not enough for me to make it a play. I'm going to start by calling you out because you repeated something last week that you've said a few times over the Go. last, say, 12 months, maybe even longer, and that's that you hate the Bulldogs. And um, you didn't say it then. I didn't but, say it then. Um, I just want to... I there, do There hate should them. be no hate. I really believe no punter should hate a team for more than maybe I, a month. I don't actually hate them. We can't, I mean, we can't, but truly, you can't um, let a team cost you money that many times. And the Dogs really are a profitable team to punt on. I mean, even last week, well, they we covered better, the we line. We on them on the back and end side one of the last, reasons yeah. you've always hated them is that they play an ugly brand of footy. But yes. look, we're not trying to win a beauty pageant here. We're trying to cover games. In fact, I really believe as a punter, you should like teams like the Dogs because they're not, you know, they're not favoured or beholded in the public eye, but they get Shift it done. Shift your mic slightly. And it's just started to you, buzz. You're right. You know what? Um, last week, overall, while they didn't score a try... They, they impressed me. They, they only conceded one try off a deflected kick. They hung tough against Still a very not. good Eels Sorry, team. sorry, you might... 
keep moving it, and maybe I can edit get, it out. It's all good. Try and get better, um, better sound there. Maybe make a note of what time we're at. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Okay, keep going. Let's try again. So last week, overall, I got to say, I actually was impressed with their performance. To hang that close with the Eels and be two all after an hour, keep them to only one try for deflected kick, it was a pretty gutsy effort, especially when they lost two key players during the week. And they will miss they will uh, miss Harawir and Naira. Not so much Ockenbor, I think, because they just slotted Meany to the wing. But overall, this is a tough side, and I think that they'll come together again and they'll give the Cowboys all they can handle. Now, as you said, the Cowboys got demolished last week. But look, it was the Broncos, and we know how strong their pack is, and the Cowboys get Maguire back. But look, I'm not betting on the Cowboys until they kind of show me they can play like a cohesive unit. They look too much like a team that kind of stands around waiting for somebody to, to make something happen, whether they're waiting for Tal Malolo to break a tackle or Morgan or Valentine Holmes to do something special. Whereas this Dogs team is kind of all in and just try and grind you to death. So I actually like the Dogs. We don't have a play on the game right now. If you want a side bet, I'll take the Dogs plus two and a half. Sure, it's only 200 bucks. Let's have another side bet already and deep enough hole at 400 bucks. So we'll have a small side bet. I'll just let you guys know, obviously, these side bets, they're only $200. If we deep, we deep dive on Friday morning and try and find more best bets. So look, don't take our side bets for gospel. We could change our minds between now and and Friday. But yes, Jacob, I will bet you $200, the Cowboys minus two and a half. Let's and just on. one more thing. When you say only $200, $200 is a lot of money to a lot of people, but it's a zero-sum game. We're betting against each other. Sure. We know neither of us is going to win like a huge landslide of them, although I'm undefeated well, so far might. this year. I might. I might. But it's our, you gotta, guys also got to remember, we're restricted on pretty much every bookie, so this is our only like kind of outlet. So this is our one unrestricted bookie where we can get a big bet on against each other. Indeed. Yes, and I'm, I need to crawl myself out of a hole. Uh, degenerate to the max. Let's move on to the Dragons uh, up against the Panthers. The Dragons are 3.5 to 4 point underdogs. The total is 38.5 points. Um, look, I know that everyone's probably going to be on the Panthers this week. Very impressive performance over the Roosters last week, coming back from 12 points to nil down to win that one. We were on the Panthers. It was our strongest play of the round with three plays on them. And people would have seen this in George Laura Dragons as their last game that they saw of the week. Just butcher a couple of late tries. And honestly, look pretty average throughout the second half of that game. Look, I don't know if you have a different opinion, Jacob, but although the Dragons butchered a couple of late tries, I still think that the Tigers were the better team in that one. Um, they do lose Ravalawa in that one. Um, you know, obviously with a ridiculous try, uh, for the first try for the Dragons, but they lose him, so they have to do a bit of a reshuffle. Your favorite fullback, Lomax, is out of the fullback position, moves to the wing, and they, they slot Dufty back there. Um, but the big one is here is Tarek Sims for me, suspended for one game. I thought that he was probably second best behind Frizzell for the Dragons in that one. Um, so, look, even though I probably know that the Dragons are the sharp side here, I don't think that the Panthers will come in lax after a win over the Roosters round one. Look, we've, we won't spend too much time on, on coronavirus, but I think a lot of these teams are kind of maybe thinking in the back of their mind this will be a shortened season, and I think that's very a real possibility. So the Panthers, after the terrible start to last season, I don't think they're coming into this one lax after beating the Roosters, and they really want to have a good start to this season. And I think they are the far superior roster here. Um, so, look, I don't... You know, I think the line at around four is probably fair. In fact, I would probably lean towards laying the three and a half with the Panthers. Uh, but you're on the other side of this one, Jacob. I do lean Dragons, and I think this is a good example of this game is going to be a natural overreaction game, and it is a game that we all know right now. Majority of the punters are going to want to take Penrith. I mean, why wouldn't you? They look true, fantastic true. and great comeback win against the back-to-back -back champs last week. they got a lot of young stars coming through. They're a fun team. The Dragons are the opposite. I mean, shitty in the charity shield where they lost the second half by like 18 points and blew that game and then kind of same thing blew a halftime lead against the tigers look dufty into fullback and lomax to wing even though you lose Ravalo, i think that's an improvement because yeah dufty offers more at the fullback position which you need even though he's got his shortcomings um no pun intended he's <laughs> yeah, a yeah. little fella but um Look, you said that they got dominated second half by the Tigers, but I should want to also give them credit in that they held tough because while Benji had it on a string and it was repeat set after repeat set, they did not crack. And you've got to actually give them some some props for their resolve that they 
They were under siege on their try line and kept turning the Tigers away. And then, as you said, could have won it. And I just wonder, are people looking at this game differently if the Dragons had stuck either of those passes in the final five minutes for the winning try? And also, if Penrith hadn't come back from 12 and beat the Roosters, like, at the end of the day, you give Penrith credit for a win, but it was a close win. And these are young Panthers, and I just wonder, do they get naturally a bit cocky? Like, the Panthers have had issues in the last couple of years of starting slow every single week because they knew they had the talent to come back and win. You don't want this young side to respond like that. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, they should know they've got to start better. But I do think that the Dragon side, if they have one edge, it's, it is an experience and a lot more first-grade games there, even though Sims is a huge loss. That's why I would take, if I could get a line above four, but I'll take the fair market line, which is plus four, because it's still my lean for another side bet against you. All right. And we will keep our powder dry till Friday for any official best bets on the game if we agree. All right, another side bet for the first second. So we've taken the flat four for $200 in that one, Jacob. Let's move on to a game that we actually both agree on, um, which is actually usually the case. But, um, you know, that's why we only give out best bets on some games that we both agree on. And this one is the Broncos. Hosting the Rabbitohs. The Broncos uh, pick them, essentially. It's $1.90 each on most sites. And the total ha- hovering around 41 and a half. I like the Rabbitohs here. I like the Rabbitohs last week um, when they were slightly more uh, underdogs. But uh, the line has come in slightly since the NRL announced that there will be no crowds here. And I think it's a big... I know we said we wouldn't talk about coronavirus too much, but this is a big factor. I think this is one game where it matters probably more than most. Because we say all the time there are a few teams in the NRL that have a stronger home field advantage than most. And the Brisbane Broncos are one of those teams. And we say that's probably worth around three or three and a half points. That's not how much the line has shifted here. I think it's a huge advantage. Not advantage, but I mean, you know, a huge bump for the Rabbitohs to play this game in front of no fans. Because at Suncorp Stadium is where you usually get a relatively packed crowd, especially for a game like this. So I think that's a big disadvantage for the Broncos. Not only that, I also mentioned when we talked about the Cowboys earlier, I thought that was one of the better games that the Broncos have played in the last 12 months. Do I expect them to play like that again? Possibly. Um, but given given the history, probably there will be a little bit of a, a letdown. Not necessarily a letdown, but them coming back down to earth a little bit, especially with Tavita Pangai Jr. out for this one. The Rabbitohs as well. I know that that was a fairly close game that could have gone either way, but it also could have been a Rabbitohs blowout. I mean, they were up by a fair margin in that one, and they could have run away with it, and the Sharks scored a couple of late tries. So I think that Sharks-Rabbits game was maybe a little bit closer than it should have. I think the Broncos overperformed last week. I think it's a huge factor that they're playing in front of an empty stadium at Suncorp Stadium. And I do think that the Rabbitohs are the better team at this point, especially early in the season where I want to bet on the Rabbitohs team with a healthy Adam Reynolds. So I like the Rabbits here. And you want to bet against a team like Brisbane that still is a new spine, you know, whether you bring in a new seven. Turpin was not the full-time hooker last year. Um, I mean, Izarko was in and out of the fullback jersey last year, as we know, because Boyd was there. But look, what's the narrative on Brisbane? It's the best forward pack in the comp. Now, that's debatable because other teams like, I guess, the Roosters or Storm would argue they've got like more seasoned veterans, right? But the truth of the matter is, you look at this Brisbane pack on paper. I mean, I I haven't done the, I haven't checked the the stats on this, but I just guess that's the youngest starting pack in the history of NRL. Because there's no one, there's no, there's no old blokes in their life. They think Alex Glenn has been named captain, but he's not back yet. Offen Gow, he's still not back with this injury. Tavita Pangai Jr. is a young bloke, but he's out suspended. Gillette retired last year. I mean, this is this is schoolboy pack. I know you've got superstars in Haas and Fafita, but I don't necessarily think this Broncos pack is going to monster the Rabbitohs pack. I mean, the Rabbitohs went up to Brisbane and won last year in front of 50,000 without Sam Burgess. And now, you know, you don't have to face the, the 50,000 people. And the Rabbitohs have emerged some other good young forwards that I talked about in our recap pod. So I don't even see a big edge in the forwards. And I love the Rabbitohs spine. You know, give me Latrell only had six runs last week and only played an hour, but he's going to be a little bit better. But I don't think you lose a heap when Johnston comes on. Agree. And give me, you know, give me Adam Reynolds and Cody Walker and, and Damian Cook in that six, six, seven, and nine to steer them, even if it is close. So I really feel the Rabbitohs should be significant favourites here. I think in that bitter feud, I think Bennett, these games mean a little bit more to him as well. He's the one that got turfed out of Brisbane, while Seabold's the one who abandoned his squad in South Sydney. I really love the Rabbitohs this week. I expect they're going to win. I agree with you, Jacob, and therefore we do have four best bets on the Rabbitohs for this week. 
We are taking the Rabbitohs plus a half a point in the first half. You'll find that one at $1.84 on Bet Easy. Do I need to read out the next best ones or read read them out? Yeah. The next For best the audio bet is listeners. plus half a point in the first half at $1.83 on Sportsbet. We're also taking the Rabbitohs plus one and a half points for the game. That is $1.87 on Unibet. The next one, the next best we would say is taking the Rabbitohs straight up to win at $2 on Unibet or at $1.91 on Bet365, where you have the extra chance, extra time, extra chance promo. Next best bet is the Rabbitohs team total over 19 and a half points. That's $1.92 on Ladbro- Ladbrokes and on Neds. The next best is $1.89 on sports bet, only three cents less. And our last best bet is the Broncos team total under 21 and a half points. You'll find that one plus money, $2.01 on Neds and on Ladbrokes. So there you go, four best bets. Now, somewhat, people have asked us, can you guys tell us your favorite bet of the week each week? You know, people, they just want more and more from us. They want more multis. They want this, they want that. Look, we're not going to probably do a gimmick of our favorite, but what I will say, if you listen or watch the pod every week, you pretty much can tell which games we're both really confident on and which games we strongly agree. Yep. You're also going to get a pretty big inkling by how many best bets we share. If we're giving out more yes. than one or two, obviously we have more confidence. Now, sorry, when you said, did I have to read next best, I thought you meant like the next best bet. You probably don't need to okay. get into like just the extra thing just to muddle people up. Sure. I had one more point <laughs> as well. We know Brisbane looked great in round one, but who did they play? The Cowboys. The Cowboys were also really poor. So this comes back to my overarching point. How good is a team versus did they just get a soft kill in round one? And we're going to get, you know, a couple more sides like that as we move on. Next game, like the Raiders. Yeah, absolutely. Next up, we've got the New Zealand Warriors up against the Raiders. Now, this one is being played at the Gold Coast, so pretty much a neutral venue there. And the the line is plus 12.5 to the Warriors, and the total is 42.5. Look, I say neutral venue, but uh, it's probably a slight home field advantage to the Warriors here, or just a slight advantage in terms of where it's being played, because the Warriors have been obviously not allowed back into New Zealand. They're hanging out at Kingscliff since they played last week against the Knights. Um, look, I don't think that's a huge disadvantage. Some people may disagree with me. I know that they've lost Patrick Herbert and Peter Hiku, who have flown home to be with their families, but the rest of the players have stayed here. And look, I think it, it's it could be a bit of a team bonding, could bring the players together. And look, to be honest with you, you know, there is a chance that this Warriors team says this is fucked. You know, we're staying in Australia. They're not going to put in for this game. But I really think that they, they they will. And if they didn't want to, they probably would have left along with the other two. So I think the Warriors will show up for this one. They could not have looked worse last week against the Knights, putting up the only donut of the round one. Um, so that's another point where you'd want to bet on the underrated team here. Uh, in terms of the Raiders, I mean, they looked good last week. Um, you know, not dominating, but I think that they probably, the margin of victory in terms of, you know, how much better they actually looked than the Titans, they scored those first three tries, they're up 18-0, maybe they coasted in the second half a little bit, but I thought the Titans pretty much matched the Raiders in that second half, so then, you know, the Raiders weren't really tested in that one, but even so, uh, I think that the Warriors will put up a fight here, I think they have a slight advantage in terms of where the game's being played, and 12 and a half points just seems a bit too high for me. I actually want to take the double digits with the with the Warriors here. Yeah, I want to be on the Warriors too. I don't think there's any rush. It's mostly 12 and a half across the board. And I think that will continue to climb because, again, every man on the street is either throwing the Raiders in as a certain win, you know, just head to head in their multi, or they're laying the points because yep. why not? The Raiders won by 18 last week. The Warriors lost by 20. But you made the point there. The Warriors faced a really tough test against a really improved Newcastle side that played bloody well. And the Raiders played a crappy Titans that were useless in the first half, yes. to be to be fair. So I don't want to completely judge these sides by how they played in round one because they played quite vastly different opponents. And I don't think it's a great thing for the Raiders to start the season with such easy opponents, you know, getting the Titans at home and then this week you get the Warriors in some trying conditions because they could get a bit complacent there that they, their wins are coming a bit easy. And in a new season... You have to try and improve. Just because you were right. good last year guarantees you nothing. And we said a couple of personnel shifts in the back line. I've never really been a big fan of Hiku. I think, you know, Kieran gets an opportunity. Pompey's a good player too. So I'm not seeing that as a big loss now. Now, if we take the Warriors and we are taking them first half, if we do get a really good line in the game, is there that risk that there's a give-up factor that they kind of 
they almost know there's a chance they might just withdraw from season 2020, which has been discussed. It's kind of like they've got a built-in excuse. Like, they can say, right. oh, we've been on the road this whole time. We've been away from our families. We're stressed. Like, fair enough. Like, everyone's got shit on their mind. We've lost uh, a couple of players. Can I like, can I they have that I will, excuse. I will jump in. Yes, no, I, I totally agree with you. But on the flip side, I really do think that most NRL players, if they look, you know, if they're relatively senile, they'll look around the rest of the world and say that, see that all of these, you know, NRL all of these sporting competitions are being cancelled, postponed, all the rest of it. So, you know, I think that a more sensible reaction from the Warriors is to say, look, fuck, this comp might not go a couple more weeks. Let's fucking put in this week. Do you mean senile or like cerebral? Like, yeah, not going senile. Senile when you're old. Not going okay, senile. when they're not. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. In a way, this could be the Warriors' grand final. Even if they are going to withdraw from the comp next week because it's not right to be away from young families and like things are more important and the, the international border thing's too big of a bridge to, to pass, like they still might fully put in. So yeah. I think we are getting line value. I also don't think we need to move too quickly, but the halftime line we're getting. To get a line better than plus six and a half in the first half, you'd almost need the game line to get to 16 before yes. you're getting a, a key number in like a plus eight. So we are willing to pull the trigger now. We're taking the New Zealand Warriors. We are taking the New Zealand Warriors. And I tell you what, we will cop some shit if these ones don't come off. But look, we've been doing this for five years. We've been winning for five years. And that's what we do. We take the ugly teams. We've got two best bets on the game. We're taking the Warriors plus six and a half points in the first half. Sorry, that is a typo there. It should be plus six and a half. In the first half, that is $1.87 on Neds and Ladbrokes. And we're going to take neither team to 30. That one's $1.87 on Sportsbet. And you can see the next best uh, underneath there. Let's move on to the Sydney Roosters hosting the Manly Sea Eagles. The line is 5.5. The Roosters are favoured. And the total is 37.5 points. Now, I guess uh, a few people have seen that their bets for this game have been voided. And I assume that would be because they have changed locations. Now this one was going to be played at the Central Coast. The Roosters have said, let's move it to Leichhardt Oval. Less travelling for both teams, less chance of more people contracting coronavirus. So I would say that Leichhardt Oval is pretty much a completely neutral venue here. Look, the Roosters are the better team. And look, both teams coming off a loss from last week. Pretty disappointing for the Roosters, but also disappointing for Manly losing at home in front of a crowd uh, to the Storm. And the Storm, you know, the forwards just dominated in that one. So, look, reasons to bet on both teams, I think. I don't want to go against the Roosters. I just know how, you know, how ruthless they can be. Um, and it's tough, you know. You try and take the plus points with the Roosters and they can blow you off the park by 20 points, especially off a loss. So it's a bad time to go against the Roosters. But likewise... This Manly Sea Eagles side, when I said they're a top six side, I think, Jacob, you said they're a top four side. Um, they're, they're a legit team. And coming off a loss, they don't want to go 0-2 here, um, especially coming off, you know, a double-digit loss to the Storm. So when I can find reasons to take both sides and go against both sides, it's probably a stay away, but lean Manly. Yeah, you look at these two teams, both disappointed with their round one performance. They both lost. If you're going to tell me these two teams are going to meet in October, this could be the grand final, I wouldn't be shocked. No, wouldn't like, be crazy. I no. still think that they're both top four or at least pushing top four contenders this year. So I think it should be a good game. I also think they're coached by smart coaches that aren't trying to explode out of the block locks and, and want to improve every week. And that showed last week and that they had players that looked a little bit underdone. So I expect both teams to improve. But in saying that, neither wants to drop to 0-2 either. So it makes this a really important game. Manly comes in unchanged. The Roosters have lost to Tilly Tupanua, apparently maybe an ACL. And he's a guy I had my eye on as a possible, you know, unearthed superstar. Because these Roosters, you've got to give them credit that they do still find yeah, these awesome yeah. young up-and-coming players. A guy like Manu, no one knew who he was two years ago. And we knew how, how he was a really good young up-and-coming center. Now people refer to him as the best center in the game. Right. Like they do, they do find these good players. They know who to buy. Um, but they do get Angus Crichton back at a fortuitous time. They slot him straight back into the back row there. Look, ultimately, I agree. I think it's going to be a good game, and my lean is just to taking the points. But with the line being five and a half, I'd want to get at least a plus six on Manly. I don't know if that's available yet, and we'll just wait and see. I think if the public's choosing on this game, they're probably going to lean towards the team that's won the comp the last two years and is playing off a loss. So I think there'll be an opportunity to take Manly if we do weigh in on this game. Yep, I would agree, and that's why we'll probably reassess on Friday morning before we release the rest of our best bets on that game and the rest of the seven games. Next up, we have the Sharkies uh, up against the Melbourne Storm. 
The Sharkies are five and a half point underdogs, and the total is 36 and a half. Another neutral venue game being played at the Dragon Stadium, Jubilee Stadium there, so pretty much no home field for both teams. But I think you do give a slight edge to the Cronulla Sharks just with the lack of you know as much travel as the Melbourne Storm, so I'd probably give them a half point bump for that. Um, no Bronson Cherry still. Uh, Dugan being named in the reserves here, I, I'd be surprised if he plays, to be honest with you. Uh, and look, I, I just don't know what Sharks team I want to believe is the Sharks team. Is it the Sharks team from last week in the first half that got pretty much dominated? Or is it the Sharks team from the second half that looked, you know, honestly, better than the Rabbits down the stretch there and, and could have won the game if they converted a couple of opportunities late? Um, in terms of the Storm, um, impressive win. Uh, I know that they won by double digits, but look, I did not think that that was Manly's best performance at all. And all, like we said last week, all Melbourne Storm tries off kicks last week, and they can bounce anywhere. So you have to give a little bit of luck in terms of that, especially when they're off kicks that bounce first. I mean, um, the Met, you know, Storm is still the better team here, but they are 1-0, and and you don't like to go against a team that's 0-1, coming up against a 1-0 team early in the season. Um, I think it's going to be a close game. I think the Sharks forward pack can probably match them. I mean, even though you still got decent forwards in that Sharks team. you still got Aaron Woods. you still got Fafida. You know, Wade Graham is good. So I think the Sharks forwards can match them. But I would need a 6.5 to want to take the Sharks. Yeah, so the Storm are coming into this one unchanged. Um, Finucane with that gnarly eye injury. Oh, he's playing. Um, that yeah. was sick. I that don't know how sick. they can heal that up and protect that from not getting that opened up again. Terrible. As you say, the Sharks are probably unchanged as well. Mulitalo had to go off with HIA, which disrupted their back line, but he's going to be okay. So I don't really know if they're going to need to slot Dugan in. And I agree. I was impressed with Cronulla, like their composure to not drop their bundle and to come back into that game and really should have won. But the problem is, like, how high is really their ability now? Because a guy like Fafita used to be one of the best props in the comp, and even years ago, so did Aaron Woods. But, like, even Fafita is still a great leader and has a lot of heart, but he doesn't have the mobility. He's really struggling with this knee. they got a couple of really good attacking back rowers, like Wade Graham, great playmaking back row, and Nakora, a lot of speed there. And this team still, at its core... Has a solid defense, kind of that um, that foundation that was laid by Flanagan. But as they slowly turn over players and you lose the experience and guys like Gallen right. and Matt Pryor, you know, each season with turnover, you're losing that kind of defensive identity and they're becoming more of an attacking team. I know they don't fear the storm. I know they always get up for this game. So I would probably lean towards taking the points again. We've mentioned last week, like we did, we did go against the storm and we'll wear that one that we'd like that Storm were the rightful winners against Manly, but the game was a little closer than the scoreline suggested, and Storm's still not full strength with, obviously, Brandon Smith to come back in, Christian Welsh to come back into this team. But I'm not actually going to take the Sharks at 5.5 when I've tipped them to not make the 8 this year, and I've yep. tipped Storm for minor premiers. So I don't think you get rich betting against the Storm unless you absolutely love the spot. That's why I'm willing to pass the game at this stage. Yeah, passing the game for this stage, unless the line gets to a point where we think that we just absolutely have to take the Sharkies. But at this point, certainly not laying the points. Because the again, the, who are the public going to bet? They're going to bet oh, the course. Storm that didn't concede a try last week against the Sharks who lost. So I think the line only goes one way. Absolutely right. Let's move on to the Sunday afternoon game. Let's. Uh, it's the Tigers laying one and a half points. Hosting the Knights, the total is 40 and a half points. And this is one of the games that is legit being hosted by the home team. It will be at Leichhardt Oval. Um, Luke Brooks still out for three to four weeks, they reckon. And Moses and Bayer, they reckon, will come back in round three. So he's still going to be out for this one. I think the Knights are the better team here. We said this in the preseason pod that we think that the Knights are a top eight material and the Tigers not so much. Look, Benji was awesome last week. I think he had a great game. But at the same time, you know, you've got to think, sometimes it's injured player theory. Luke Brooks gets injured just before um, everyone lifts. And I think, you know, Benji had an awesome game. But in this one, I think that the Knights have had time to kind of, you know, wrap their heads around what Benji did last week. And I think they're going to pressure him a little bit more on his kicks and that kind of thing. And, and Josh Reynolds is not the best player anymore. So I think, you know, the Knights can probably take some game plan there where they pressure Benji a little bit more than last week. Um... I think the Knights have a way superior forward pack to the Tigers. You saw what they did to the Warriors last week. The Warriors have arguably one of the worst forward packs in the comp, but the, the Tigers 
probably a bottom four forward pack in the comp, would you say, Jacob? Um, so I think the, oh, yeah. the Knights... Oh, the Tigers, you're a little lower on their forward pack. I think it doesn't have the game breakers, but it's quite solid across the board. Sure, I still do think the Knights will win the forward battle here. I think the Knights pretty much are superior in every aspect, you know, in terms of positional, except for maybe the outside backs. Um, the Knights are fairly weak in the outside backs. So look, empty stadium. I think the Knights are slightly better than the Tigers. And, you know, the Tigers are still laying points when an empty stadium doesn't give you that much of a home field advantage. I think that the Knights get the outright win here as dogs. So do I. Look, both these teams were very impressive in round one. If I got to review my preseason predictions, I wouldn't change my opinion. I yep. still don't think the Tigers are going to make the eight, as you said. And I still do think the Knights are a top eight side, even though I acknowledge that the Knights played a very lackluster Warriors. So... You know, pretty much anyone sure. would have beat the Warriors. But it's still, they had the look to me of a, a well-put-together footy team and a focused footy team. And you got to say, as I mentioned earlier in this pod, Dragons blew chances too. So as good as the Tigers were, they could have easily lost that one. Uh, now, yeah, as you say, no Brooks. Benji's going to need to be great, but I think they can mitigate what he does by yep. pressuring him a bit more. I think the Knights will do that. I think they do have more class and they are slightly more focused. And I'm very happy that we're getting them. We, we played them a week early. So yes. when we gave them out with last week's best bets at plus two and a half, that was before, obviously, the results when the Knights the very next day won 20 nil. We didn't know they were going to win 20 nil, but we, we were very confident they would beat the Warriors. That, that played into our thinking, as well as our power ratings just saying they were the better team. But I still like the fact that even today, these other bets that we're giving out, um, the Knights are still reflected as an underdog by every bookie and i don't agree with that so we've got to take it yeah absolutely um we've got three best bets on this one and one like jacob said was released last week along with the rest of our best bets on friday in the tripod app we took the knights plus two and a half points that's a dollar 91 on bet 365 you cannot get that one anymore we're adding two best bets to the mix we're taking the knights plus one and a half points in the first half that one's dollar 87 on ladbrokes and on neds we're also going to take the Tigers team total under 20 and a half points. That one is $1.91 also on Ladbrokes and on Neds. And just on that note, I would recommend you guys just to get all of the bookies that we do suggest that you do get. If you go into our Facebook group, Tripod Punters Tips Forum, you'll find the pinned post in there. We only give out best bets on reputable bookies that we recommend. So I'd recommend that you hit that bookie links link in our Tripod Facebook group and sign up to all of those uh, bookies so that you can get on every best bet the minute they do get released. And to round off the round, we have the Titans up against the Eels. The Titans are 7.5 point underdogs and the total is 40.5 points. Not a huge lean on this one, but if I were to play a team, I think I'd have to take the Parramatta Eels, even though it is pretty square. I think in terms of power ratings, I probably have the Eels just a bit higher um, than this line suggests it probably should be. I think that Parramatta Eels have an advantage pretty much in every aspect of positional. Um, I like that the halves a lot better. I think Ash Taylor did not look 100% last week, and I don't know if he's still carrying some sort of injury, but he didn't look 100%, that's for sure, last week. He got the knock during the game too. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, he's he, he struggled with injuries in the past. I think that the, the fine weather here helps the, the Eels a little bit. I think that they have a few more playmakers in their outfit. I think we'll see a little bit more out of Mitch Moses and Dylan Brown this week. Because I think that the, the weather... I know a lot of people like to complain about that 8-2 game uh, from Parramatta against the Dogs. And I think a lot of them say, oh, Parramatta, there's no way they're contenders after you know that pretty shitty game where it was 2 all against the Dogs for ages. But... You know, Wankfest Stadium is known to get a little bit slippery, a little bit dewy, and I think that was the case, and, and there were a few errors, and obviously, you know, game one rust and all that sort of thing. So, look, I do think the Eels are superior, and, and look, at 7.5, it's probably probably fairish, but I would certainly lean towards the Eels, even though, you know, catching 7.5 at home is probably not the worst play. You're trying to call it wank fest. It's not as clever as wank best because you swap the B, swap the B and the W around. It's wank best. It rolls off the tongue. Does it? Wank um, best. Wank yeah. best. Yeah. Uh, stop trying to make wank fest happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> That's the I first think time that the I tried Titans, to make it happen. The Titans take a lot out of that second half against the Raiders. I think had they laid over and died, then it's like so much work to do. But to play a six-all second half against last year's grand finalists 
at least that's something you build on. And likewise, I think that the Eels will feel the same way in that winning 8-2 and conceding no tries is also a great foundation for your season. So I think both sides come in positive. The Titans, the only change they've made is they've flipped Peachy to the bench. And look, if when Peachy was in his origin form and playing in the 14 for New South Wales, he's a great utility because he covers a lot of positions. When he's playing for the Gold Coast Titans and he's a big money recruit, he can't be on your bench. He has to be on the field. And you know what? I, I thought he was okay last week. When he moved to six for a bit there, when it was either Roberts or, um, or Ash Taylor, when they got that knock, he moved in and played 5-8. I actually think he's a natural lock. I don't want him trying to look to pass the ball. I want him running it. Yep. I think he used to play lock in his early days at Panthers and at Sharks. But um, I'd play him 13. I know they got Jai Arrow, but I'd move Jai Arrow to, to front row or I, to second row. Tell you row. who else I want running the ball instead of passing it. You can probably guess. Yeah, your, your old mate Bryce yeah. there. But Bryce is a guy who probably would be suited better to the bench. Um, look, <laughs> Kelly coming in, he actually is a good centre. So I think that at least that that covers it. But but Peachy needs to be on the field, needs to be in the middle, and needs to be just trying to trying to take on the line. Yep, Brimson and Fodawaka are both named in the reserve. So those are two players that would improve the side if they turn out to be fit to go. I think this is another game, like quite a few we've spoken about this week. There's an obvious side that everyone's going to want to bet on. They're all going to want to take the Eels. Now, I know the Eels didn't cover you know, a 10-point line last week, but I still think they came fifth last year. There's lots of hype around them this year. Titans have been woeful for so many years now and lost by 18. So I think that the money will come on the Eels, which is why that line will probably continue to climb, if anything. But I even would play it at 7.5. So I think we're going to agree to a little side bet here if you want. Um, I'll take the Titans plus 7.5. I you know, I hate to do it, but I just think, as I say, it's a new season. Everyone has worked bloody hard in the off-season, trained hard. No one is giving up just yet, especially the Titans with a new coach. I know home opener doesn't mean much when it's not in front of home fans, right. but I still think the Eels will will take a little bit more time to improve. So if I, I think that the Titans can keep this one close, more similar to how they played second half against Raiders. Yeah, and you absolutely might be right. Let's lay $200 on it, though. I'll take Para minus 7.5. You can have the Titans, and that will do it for the week, guys. Um, thanks again for tuning in. I know that... You know, we might be the only people giving out sports betting tips at the moment. There's not many sports on, but we appreciate you tuning in. Um, Who knows how long the NRL will go on for, but certainly we will have games to bet on this weekend, which is always a plus. Um, Make sure you're in the Tripod app, as always. And um, yeah, we will see you guys on Sunday night around 9 p.m. on this page uh, for a full recap of the round two bets and also the round two games. Jacob, anything you want to add before we get out of here? I mean, stay safe, guys. And if you get time to watch the footy, enjoy. And uh, let's go even better. Winning week last week by a fraction, but let's make it an even better winning week in round two. Indeed. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. See you Sunday night. Legal.